All right, uh, let's get started. I'm the section host, and uh, I just want to remind you that we have uh, HackMD and Slido on the disco and website for use. And the following talk is test with confidence or deep dive into to a landmark flex ski test in Python, presented by Nissan. Please join, uh, join me in welcome speaker. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we're going to be discussing a topic that often goes unnoticed, but significantly impacts our developer user experience, flaky tests. Tests are the backbone of our development process, ensuring our software works as expected. But what happens when these tests aren't reliable? Today, I'll be discussing how to find your flaky tests and how we can eliminate them. Thank you. Uh, so who am I? My name is Nisanthan. I'm a senior software engineer at Sentry. And some of my personal achievements is that I've summited Mount Fuji, hiked through the Amazon jungle, and camped in the Sahara Desert. So what is a flaky test? It's a test that could return different results, pass or fail, on different runs without any changes to the code. So what causes this unpredictability? Asynchronous code can sometimes execute in unexpected sequences, race conditions where the output depends on the timing of uncontrollable events, and environmental factors, like the differences between your local machine and CI servers. The saying inconsistent results erode trust in a testing system really encapsulates our challenge. Without reliable tests, our faith in the entire testing process goes down. The danger isn't in the false positives, but also in the time wasted chasing down these false alarms. So my goal is to automate flaky test detection. So the approach we use at Sentry is when we're running the test suite using PyTest, we have this plugin that uses the PyTest run test make report hook and we check there, did the test fail? If yes, we're going to rerun the entire test suite. And on the next run, we check again. And then if it passes, then we're going to say, oh, this is probably a flaky test. Because if they're passing on the retry, and we didn't change any code, this is a flaky test. So we're going to report this to Sentry. And we're using auto retry with uh, PyTest rerun failures. And internally, we would just retry five times, so as a rule of thumb. And here's a quick code prototype uh, for the plugin. So we just want to import the Sentry SDK and initialize it. And then under the PyTest run test make report function, we want to execute all other hooks to obtain the report object. Then we want to avoid the skip calls, and we want to get the attribute PyTest Sentry exec chain. And for every, when the test fails, we want to store the failures in that attribute. And then when the test passes, we want to fetch all of those failed tests from that attribute and send them to Sentry. So put together, this is what it kind of looks like, quick prototype. But we've already built this plugin. It's called PyTest Sentry. It's open source. You can pip install it. You can fork it, modify it, do whatever. <laughs> and so now, once this system's in production, and it's been running for like a week or two, uh, you'll have enough data that we can query for the flaky test. So Sentry has this nice capability uh, for querying and making dashboards. And so this is actually a screenshot of like our internal flaky test dashboard. And you may notice that there's tables for flaky test backend and flaky test front end. So our backend, we use Django, which is Python. But on the front end, we use React and TypeScript. And this approach is language agnostic, which is what I kind of wanted to point out. 
So you can use this with any sort of test runner and any language. So just for JavaScript TypeScript or Ruby, like RSpec for Ruby, I guess, yeah, and so forth. So best practices. So once we found, like identified all of our flaky tests, how can we go about eliminating them? When we encounter a flaky test, our first instinct might be to fix it immediately. However, I would pause and ask, how critical is this test? A test for a core feature is worth the effort to stabilize. But if it's for a legacy feature or a rarely used edge case, the return on investment on fixing the test might not justify the effort. So sometimes the best decision is to just modify, skip, or delete the test. Tests should live in their own bubble, untouched by external states or other tests. PyTest Fixer provides this by setting up the prerequisites and cleaning up after tests. So for instance, uh, if you're testing a database feature, a fixture can create a fresh database instance and tear it down post-test. Also consider mocking external services and dependencies. This way your tests aren't relying on external systems, state, or availability, eliminating an entire category of flakiness. Your tests should be laser focused on individual functionalities. If you find yourself writing a test that checks multiple functionalities, it's a cue to split it. Ensure each test has a singular, well-defined purpose, and also maintain distinctiveness between test cases to avoid redundant checks. Timing can be a flakiness culprit, especially in integration tests. So instead of arbitrary waits and sleeps, monkey patch to generate timestamps or date times and emulate a certain test condition. And lastly, differences between local and CI environments are a classic source of flakiness. Uh, strive for parity between them, so you can use tools like Docker, which can help with this. When your tests require external interactions, think of ways to minimize variability. This can be achieved by using local stubs or using fixtures to simulate external calls. Identification and best practices are just the start. Monitoring is our safety net. With Sentry's dashboard, we not only keep an eye on application issues, but also on any lingering or emerging flaky tests. It's an ongoing process ensuring our code base remains trustworthy. In conclusion, flaky tests challenge our trust in the entire testing framework, but with careful identification, best practices, and continuous monitoring, we can restore that trust. And with that, uh, thank you for listening to my presentation. I'm open to any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you for this incident. Uh, 大家有什么问题的话, 可以在Slido, 或是, 可以现场, uh, 举手也可以。We have one question. Uh, any experience to distinguish uh, fast kick test and random bug? Distinguish flaky test and random bug. So once again, flaky test is when you haven't changed any of your code, but every time you run the test suite, it's passing or failing, right? Whereas if it's a bug, it should be consistently failing. Uh, I don't know, does that make sense? Yeah. Do you think properties-based uh, testing is fast kick test for our previous topic? Uh, you mentioned the previous uh, section. Properties-based testing is yeah, means the hypothesis uh, using the, yeah, the Python library code hypothesis. It's like you can pass parameter of a uh, test to. Uh, yeah, like parameterizing like yeah, the parameter. test values. No, that's not. Oh, that's. Uh, I don't think it's flaky test. That's fine. That's a valid form of testing. Uh, next. Uh, 
Which do you think is better, monkey patching time or uh, is patching pattern or they or inject land from outside? I personally prefer monkey patching the date times. Um, that way, I can just assign like a fixed date, right? Um, I don't know. It's personal preference. What's the actual scenario of a happening? Happening facts and why don't fix it? What is the actual scenario of happening? Why don't fix it? What uh, you know what that is? Actual scenario of happening flaky? Maybe I want to. Uh, anyone uh, ans want to share? Uh, ask this question and want to provide more detailed context. Uh, no. <laughs> I think it's mentioned. You probably mentioned that uh, if you have a, a extra scenario task test, and that you don't, but you don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, okay. Wait. So if you have a flaky test and you don't want to fix it, <laughs> oh. I don't know. I feel like that'd be just hell because your CI is going to fail and then you'd have to click rerun every time and you'll never have anything deployed to production. So. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, how, how did I feel you. feel cold enough. Stop <laughs> knowing. Why so hot? <laughs> how did you determine if a test is really FXK or a failure is caused by unstable? Uh, environment. Mm, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, so you want to keep a consistent environment. So that's where like tools like Docker will help with that, right? Uh, maintaining consistent environments. Um, yeah, I think that. So I think that's more of a what do you call that? Uh, dev infra type thing, right? So you want to make sure it's consistent, and then once you're sure that's uh, like. Consistent reproducible builds, then you can move on to like debugging actual uh, application code and so forth. Thanks. What's the actual? No, it's not this one. Product, uh, productivity is it wise to decide uh, de uh, dedicate a developer in turn in a team to just fix a fix key test? Hmm. I would say. Yes, it, I, I think it's like a case by case basis. It depends on your own internal situation, right? If you're finding that you're not able to deploy code into production because like CI is taking too long and it's just like you just feel like it's slow moving, then yeah, it's probably time to tackle these types of flaky tests. But once you have the monitoring in place, right, with that dashboard, you can kind of see which tests are causing the most amount of flakiness. And from there, you can kind of just quickly tackle them on an ad hoc basis after that initial first rundown of, hey, let's clear out all those flaky tests, right? And yeah, then it's just an ongoing process, but still, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If tests are wrong frequently, uh, that might already notice the circumstances, but uh, just ignore that. Um, what make platform special? Platform special. If tests are run frequently, devs might already notice this circumstance. But in our, what makes platform? Oh, so, oh, you just mean like Sentry. Um, Sentry, it's just like a place where we're just putting in this, um, like recording these exceptions, right? But you can actually like, you don't have to send it into Sentry. You can put it into like a Postgres database and then build up your own like redash or like some sort of like dashboards on your own preferred platform. I just we just put it into Sentry because we built Sentry and it's a natural place for us to shove everything into. But uh, I would more focus on the approach that we uh, used, right? Which is uh, using retries, but capturing those. Uh, capturing when it failed and then passes, right? Because that's what hints at the flakiness. So it's really the approach that I want to focus on, not really the platform. The platform's just like a convenient way for us to 
uh, store and view these uh, types of flaky tests, like exceptions. Okay, um, it's about time. Uh, so yeah. thanks for everyone for asking <laughs> questions and th thanks again for Nissan and and uh, thank you. Thank you. And next uh, section is a lightning talk will start in uh, at five twenty. And th please thank again for uh, Nissan talk.